Making your own multiplayer game used to be a long and complicated process, but with GameMaker's new built-in multiplayer for GX games, it's the easiest it's ever been. Today we'll be creating this quick online action game, which you can then upload to GX games and play together with your friends. Currently, you need the beta version of GameMaker to use multiplayer, so download that from the link in the description. After installing it, create a new blank project, give it a name, and then hit let's go. I have an asset package here that I'll drag into GameMaker, which contains the sprites for this tutorial. You can download it from the link in the description. After importing the package, click on add all and then import. This will add 4 sprites to your project, which are the background, an obstacle, a player, and a projectile. Now create 3 new objects. The first one will be obj game, which will manage your multiplayer game. The second one is obj player, which is used for all players. And the third one is obj projectile, which the player fires. Now open obj player and give it the spr player sprites. Then open obj projectile and give this the spr projectile sprite. Now let's create a small level for the game. Open the existing room from the asset browser. In the room editor, go down into the room settings and change the width and height to 320 and 180. Also go under viewports and enable viewports. Under viewport 0, make it visible. We are doing this so we can upscale our game and give it a higher resolution. Now set the camera size to 320 by 180, that's the size of our room, and the viewport size to 1280 by 720. Now under layers, select the background layer and set the sprite here to SPR background, enable horizontal and vertical tiling. Now for the objects, you don't need to place any players right now because GameMaker will take care of that. You just need obj game. So select the instances layer and put obj game anywhere in the room. Okay, so now that the boring part is done, let's start programming our game. Open obj game in the events window, add the create event. If you're asked, select gml code. Now in the event, let's call a few functions. First of all, tell GameMaker which object you're going to use for your players, which in our case is obj player. Then in a condition, try to join a game. This will only work if you were invited. If you weren't invited, then this function will return false, which is what we are checking for here. In that case, create a new game. It will take two players. The maximum for this right now is four. Then the second argument is true, which enables offline testing. Now run the game and in the top left corner, you'll see a player. That's where GameMaker creates your players by default. Let's place them out separately now. Open the obj player object and here add the create event. First of all, set the y or vertical position to half the room's height so it's centered vertically. And then check if the player's ID is 0, which is the first player. If it is, then we set the X position or the horizontal position to 50. But if the player's ID is 1, which is the second player, then we set its X position to room width minus 50, so that's on the right side of the room. Run the game and both players will now be in separate places. Now let's get them to move. Before we do that though, you can see the game appears a bit blurry. To fix this, go into Game Options, open Opera GX, and under Graphics, disable the Interpolate Colors option. The first step to moving a player is reading input, and the way you read input works differently in multiplayer. So let's go into OBJ Player and add the step event. Here we are gonna call Rollback Get Input which gives you the input struct for a player. Let's store that in a local variable. Then in a condition, let's check if input.left is true, which means the left arrow key is being held down. In that case, we move the player to the left by reducing its x value. Similarly, let's check for the right key input, then the up key, and then the down key. 
left, right, up and down are some default inputs and they are assigned to the arrow keys. Run the game and you can now move around with the arrow keys. The second player is just moving randomly and that's because we enabled offline testing. With that enabled, the other players always receive random input every frame as a basic form of testing. Now before we continue developing this game further, let's take it online. You'll also be able to invite your friends and play with them. First of all, in OBJ games create event, you need to disable offline testing. So just set the second argument here to false. Then up here, select the Opera GX target if you haven't already. Now before running the game, go to the GX games website and make sure you are logged in. This is required for testing multiplayer. Then back in Game Maker, run the game. It should open up in Opera GX. Once the game starts up, scroll down and you'll find the copy share URL button. Click on it and that will copy a link that another player can use to join your game. At the moment we are testing locally so your friends can't join yet. So open a new tab and paste the link here. Drag it out into its own window and just lay them out so you can see both at the same time. They will connect and you will be able to play your game for now with yourself. These are connected through actual servers so even though you're testing locally, both of these games are connected through the internet. This means that at this stage your game already has functional online multiplayer. Now how do you upload this game and play it with your friends? Back in Game Maker, click on create executable and then log in through Opera. Once you've done that and the game is compiled and uploaded, click on edit game on Opera. This will open Dev Cloud where you may need to log in again. Once you're on the game's details page, scroll down and enable multiplayer. Select the number of players your game allows, ours has two, then hit save and confirm. Now open the publishing menu, enable the private version and then click on open private game. This is the page where you or anyone else can play your game. Once a game is hosted, you will see a list of players on the right and a copy button below it. Clicking on this will copy a link to the game you just hosted which you can share with a friend and once they open it in Opera GX, they'll be in your game in an instant. So you can continue to update your game and test it with your friends through this private version and once it's ready for public release, just promote your latest version to live and then enable public. Now let's define our own inputs which will include mouse inputs for aiming and firing. Before doing that, I'll enable offline testing again. Then before a game is joined or created, let's call this function to define our own inputs. We'll specify a struct in the arguments and in this struct, we'll list all of our inputs. First, we have to redefine the same left, right, up and down inputs that we are already using and then we'll define new MBX and MBY inputs which are the coordinates of the mouse cursor. And then finally we define fire which is the left mouse button. Now you can use the ORD functions to use letter keys for some inputs. So I'll use the WASD keys for movement. You can even assign multiple inputs by using an array. Now for aiming, go into the player and open the step event. At the end, set the image angle which rotates the sprites and set it to the direction from the player towards the mouse cursor. In game, your player will now look at the mouse. Now spawning projectiles should be simple because we already have an object for it and a fire input that we just created. So in the player's step event at the end, let's check if the fire input was pressed. Instead of using just fire, I'll use fire underscore pressed which will check if the button was just pressed in the current frame instead of being held down. In that case, create a new instance of the projectile object, store that instance's ID in a local variable. Then through that variable, set the speed of the projectile, then set its direction which is where it moves 
and this is the image angle of the player and then also set the image angle of the projectile and then set a new variable called player this will store the self of the current player to later tell us which player created a projectile so in game you can now fire let's program what happens when a projectile collides with a player in the player object add a collision event with the projectile now in the event check if the player belonging to the projectile is the self of the current player meaning it's your own projectile in that case exit the event because your own projectile shouldn't hurt you after that create a particle effect i'll use the ring effect with a white color then give the player a random x position and a random y position so it respawns at a random place inside the level finally destroy the projectile which is the other instance in game you can now fire at the other player and defeat them this game is becoming more and more fun with each addition and next we are going to add scoring let's add points that you get when you defeat a player we'll do this in three simple steps step one open the create event of the player and create a new variable called points step two add the draw end event here use draw text to draw the points value above the player you can also draw the name of the player here if you want step three in the collision event with the projectile you want to increase the points of the player that attacked you so we get the player from the other instance which is a projectile and then we increase the points value inside it run the game and you have your scoring working you can now compete with your friends to see who can make a higher score let's add a new element to the game now which are these obstacles that spawn randomly i'll create a new object for this obj obstacle i'll give this the spr obstacle sprite now these can either spawn on the left or right side of the room and then move towards the other side so add the create event here if the x is at or below zero meaning it's on the left edge set the edge speed which is the horizontal speed to 4 so it moves to the right otherwise set the edge speed to minus 4 so it moves left and flip the sprite horizontally then add the outside room event which runs when the instance is completely outside the room and here destroy the instance now let's make this obstacle hurt the player it will be similar to how a projectile hurts it so in the player duplicate the collision event with the projectile and make it a collision event with the obstacle open the new event and remove this line where it checks for the player that's not needed here and also remove the line where it adds a score because an obstacle doesn't belong to a player the only thing that remains is spawning this obstacle open the obj game object and add the alarm zero events this alarm will run repeatedly and create the obstacles here let's choose a random x position which is either zero or room width the left edge or the right edge of the room then we choose a random y position from a range then we create an instance of the obstacle at our chosen position and finally we set alarm zero to run again after 40 frames now to kick off this alarm open the create events and here set alarm zero to run after 10 frames this is wrong and you'll soon see why that is disable offline testing so it's now online and run the game your obstacles will start spawning immediately and you will soon get an error saying that you can't create managed objects before a game starts and that's right because the game hasn't started yet all the players haven't joined so we need to make sure that the alarm only starts when the game has started we do that in the rollback start event which is found under other so add that event and from the create event remove this line and put it inside the new rollback start event this will run when all the players have joined and that's when the obstacles will also start spawning in game this will now work fine without any errors 
So you must keep in mind that any objects that are part of your game loop shouldn't be created or modified before the game starts. You can either use this rollback start event for that or use the rollback game running variable which returns true when the game has started. If you still want to create an instance before the game starts without getting any errors, you can disable the managed option for it but then you need to make sure that such an object doesn't affect your gameplay at all. So you can use non-managed objects for creating visuals that don't affect your game. Now share your first multiplayer game with your friends and play it together. I recommend creating more small projects like this which will be fun and you'll also learn a lot from it. Read the manual to discover all that you can do with multiplayer. It's linked in the description and I'll see you in the next video.